So looking at the first exam on measurements, metric conversion, density and energy. So the question here, the answers for most of this was, was round about that bit where we had the little balls and circles showing uh, solid, liquid and gas. This is where this information came into it. So as temperature decreases, kinetic energy of matter decreases. Yeah? Remember the kinetic energy of matter is connected to the temperature. And as temperature drops, molecules move more slowly, they have less kinetic energy. And as temperature rises, molecules move more quickly, they have more kinetic energy. So a drop in temperature means a drop in kinetic energy. This will eventually lead to a gas turning into, and there was two answers I accepted. I was really looking for, if I started from a gas, as temperature drops, the next thing it's going to hit is the liquid state. Liquid state at the boiling temperature. Or, as some people put solid, yeah, I guess if the temperature goes down far enough, it'll hit the liquid and then keep going and then eventually hit the solid state. But it's hitting the solid state at the freezing temperature or melting temperature, whichever way you want to think about it. And that's still, this whole section here for three marks was part of a rough ride for people. So the kinetic energy is decreasing, <coughs> converts to a liquid or a solid, the boiling or freezing temperature comparison. Bonding forces between the molecules is now compared to a gas. The bonding forces are now stronger or greater, increased. The temperature drops, the molecules move more slowly, and the molecules start to bind together much more strongly. That gives us a greater rigidity and order of a liquid compared to a gas, or the static molecules in a solid compared to a liquid. So as kinetic energy drops with a drop in temperature, bonding forces start to take hold. Think of it like trying to hold magnets close together. If you move your hands too much, you've got too much kinetic energy, there isn't any really force of attraction. As your hands slow down, then that force of attraction takes hold. The molecules lock together. Now, the last part, um, body forces are now greater. If we decrease temperature, the order of the molecules increases, and the molecules will something at absolute zero. The molecules will stop moving. He said once we reach absolute zero, the molecules don't have any more energy to lose. And when we reach absolute zero, molecules stop moving altogether. Yes, three factors which suggest the chemical reaction is taking place. We could talk about a change in colour of the chemicals. We could talk about a solid which suddenly disappears during the course of the reaction. Maybe it's being used up. Or maybe it, the reaction causes a solid precipitate to appear. Maybe it causes some effervescence and bubbling of a gas being produced. Okay, all these kinds of things. Maybe it could be a drop in temperature as energy is being taken in and consumed by the reaction as the temperature drops. Or maybe there's energy being given off and the flask feels hotter to the touch. The right use of the ball. Oh my goodness, these cause problems. <laughs> Millimeters to micrometers is a factor of from meters to micrometers. It's a factor of a factor of a million. Yeah. So if we start with a meter, which is a larger measurement, we're going to move to a larger answer. So it's multiplying by million. So the decimal place moves once, twice, three, four, five, six times. So we get five, four, five, four. 5,050 micrometers for the answer. Let's try this pinch to be better. Kilograms to a gram is a factor of a Thousand. <coughs> Back from a thousand. Again, starting with a larger unit, 
that should be on this uh, larger answer. The decimal place is moving once, twice, three times to the right upwards. So we get 2, 0, 3, 5, 4, 200, 3,500. And then for milliliters to a liter, it's a factor of a thousand. And this time we are dividing by a thousand. Because we're starting with a smaller unit, so we should get a smaller answer. So that becomes point one or eight liters. Last one, going from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Remember, comparing the two normally, Fahrenheit should be the larger value numerically compared to Celsius. So we are multiplying by 9 over 5, or 1.8, and then adding 132 last. Adding 132 to again make a bigger number. So that came out to, I think it was, was it 197? One ninety seven by six degrees Fahrenheit. Most people got those two the first two seem to be tricky. So first one on scientific notation. Turn this number into a scientific notation number. So we want the decimal place to make this a number between one and ten. The decimal place has got to move to there. So it's moved once, twice, three times. We get 1.057 times 10 to the power of 3. Next one, we again want this to become a number between 1 and 10. So the decimal place has to move three times again, but this time to the right. So it becomes 3.642 times 10 to the negative 3. Question 5. How many significant figures are in the number? So remember, zero is at the beginning and never significant. Never, never significant. A big no there. Zeros in the middle are always significant. Okay, so we like those ones. <coughs> And zeros at the end are only significant if there's a decimal place. There is a decimal place, so these zeros at the end are significant. It gives us one, two, three, four significant figures. This number, there's no decimal place, so we don't know for sure about these numbers. All we know for sure um, is one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So right, then between non-zeros, these zeros here are definitely significant. Were you not supposed to do the whole 5 or 7 thing? If people put 5 or 7, I was fine with that, because that's the way it describes it in the book. That's fine. So 5 I doesn't hate, work? Sorry? 5 doesn't work? 5 works, yes. Okay, we'll correct that in a second. So 5 or 7 is the way the book describes it, but you, you must have a definitive answer. Is it 5 or is it 7? You need to bet basic calculation on the data. So it's always safe to assume the minimum level of significance. <coughs> I mean, maybe there is a decimal place there. It just wasn't recorded, but we don't know for sure. 500 units is maybe the smallest amount that this thing can measure. Last one, there is a decimal place, so all these digits are significant. And that gave us six for that one. This one again, oh my goodness, this, this, Gave people some bumpy times. Definitely gave some people bumpy times. So, 54.4 divided by 9.8. Our final answer, because it's a division, depends upon the initial piece of data with the least number of significant figures. So we have three significant figures compared to just two. Your final answer will therefore be quoted to two significant figures. The confidence in your answer is only as good as your least precise piece of data. So what was the raw answer for this? 5.51 maybe? Is that the raw answer? Taking it to the two <coughs> figures, it just meant we dropped the <coughs> and it became 
5.5. Next one, the 49.4 divided by 118.08. Be careful when you're putting these numbers into the calculator. Look at those numbers. What will roughly be the answer? 49 divided by 118, that's going to be about 0.4 or 0.5-ish. Somebody had an answer of 45 for this. Small number being divided by a bigger number. Think about the logic of your answer. That's, all it means is that you just typed in the wrong number. You just did a mistype. That should be, some of the answers which were like that produced a huge big answer. People should have, been, should have been catching them. So the raw answer here was... What do we get? I can't remember what point four one eight two six three six seven five three six seven above. Now the important part here is again a division. It's the least number of significant figures. So three significant figures compared to one two three four five. So our final answer is the three significant figures. We chop the three. It's less than five. So it becomes point four one eight. Next one. 720 minus 35. Now being a subtraction, now we're looking for the least number of decimal places. Three compared to zero decimal places. So our final answer should be quoted to zero decimal places. Multiplying and dividing is the least number of significant figures, and adding and subtracting is the least number of decimal places. So what was the raw answer for this once again? Bit louder. 684.998. Okay. So we want the last decimal place to be on the decimal <coughs> top. So the last one we had there was 9, which means we'll round up to 685. That's the first number for the chop is greater than 5 than we round up. The last one, 22.36 plus the 8.170. That game was at 53 something. Oh, big fun. 30. 33, was it? 30.53. Oh, I knew there was a 5 3 in there somewhere. And we have two decimal places compared to three. So, the next question, of course, is the right equation which is to say that the energy of the, of the system is equal to the specific heat multiplied by the mass multiplied by the change in temperature. That would have got people one out of three marks straight away. The specific heat, we're told, is, for water is 4.184 joules. Okay, that's the mass of the system in question was for the water, which was 320 grams. And this is where some people started hitting that speed bump again. The change in temperature, well the temperature started at here 17 degrees and went down to minus 8 degrees. That's a change in temperature of 25 degrees. 25 degrees. There are a lot of people who thought that was a change of just 9 degrees. And again, it's just a silly, silly mistake. If people had thought about it for a second, that would have been very apparent to them. Very silly mistake. Very costly. So a 25 degrees change, but something that a lot missed was it was a, it was a change in temperature by minus 25. We've gone from 17 degrees <coughs> to minus 8. So it's a change down in temperature. So we work this out, it's, is that about 33,000 joules or something? Joules, don't forget the units, joules. And this is minus 33,472 joules. And what's this energy for? It's the energy of the water. We've taken the specific heat of water the mass of water and the change in temperature for the water. So it must be an energy change for water. And we said that the energy of the reaction 
was related to the energy of the water by being equal to opposite. So that's the energy of the water. The energy of the reaction was plus 33,472 joules. So the liquid has a measured volume of 1450 milliliters, and the mass of just over 50 to 60 grams. And you're asked for the density of this material. Whenever we're talking about density, you should straightaway remember the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. Again, for those three marks, one mark out of three, just by giving me that equation. So, uh, bear in mind that it's supposed to be a mass in grams per liter. <coughs> so we do have a conversion here for the volume, 1450 milliliters. It should be converted to 1.450 liters. Okay. So put that into the equation. The mass was 1560.4. The volume was set as 1.454 litres. Uh, we crunch those numbers together, it gives us... Oops, 0.76.1. There's your raw answer. And number of significant figures should be appropriate who we'll took their answer to four significant figures. That would chopping off the watt and point one, leaving you with one thousand and seventy six grams per litre. All three marks. Um, so the first part of the random mix was described what is meant by specific heat. We said the specific heat was the amount of energy for one gram of material to have its temperature raised by one degree Celsius. Next one, <coughs> the basal metabolic rate. The energy being consumed by a body, body at rest. The minimum energy being used during the day. And then last part, people rallied at the end, right at the end, and um, things which affect the metabolic rate were simply went through quite a few. And age is a factor, and the basal metabolic rate slows down once you get into your thirties. Could be gender, could be your uh, muscle to fat index, whether you're a man or a woman, and uh, whether you have a fever, uh, high elevated body temperatures that raise your basal metabolic rate. So they're all kinds of things there.